In today's video, we're opening a mystery PSA return. What's up guys, we're back with another PSA return video and in this video, I literally have zero idea what is inside this PSA return. So I'm actually consigning this PSA return for a viewer. He hit me up and said, hey, I wanna uh, you know, send you my PSA return. You can open it up and sell the cards for me. So that's what we're gonna do, but he didn't actually tell me what's inside. Could be junk, could be great, we're just gonna have to see what it is, but first we have a giveaway. I'm giving away these random slabs that we picked up over the years through random mystery packs and different grading services and stuff. All you have to do, like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, let me know down below what you think about this PSA return, and go check out ruxin34.com if you guys wanna purchase any of the cards you see in this video. And others, there's other stuff there too. All right, I'm gonna open this thing over here because these PSA boxes are not usually the easiest thing to open. They're usually pretty well taped, which is a good thing, I guess. Let's be very careful. All right, we've got the massive long box out. Let me, uh, there's more tape on here. We gotta get this out. By the way, I forgot to mention, this is, the viewer's name is Marcus. So shout out to Marcus for, you know, giving us some cool content and hopefully some cool stuff that you guys can purchase on the website as well. Okay, so unlike normal PSA returns, I won't like be expecting like tens and stuff. I don't really know what to expect. I don't know if he's sitting like good condition cards, bad condition. Hopefully there's some good cards in here in general. I really don't know. It's gonna be completely random. We're starting off, this is obviously not an English card. So let's see what, it's looking pretty clean on the back. Uh, it's a seven, okay. That's an ultimate rare though. That's pretty cool actually. That's a good start to have a pretty, different card we got a duelist legacy volume 2 ultimate rare from japan i actually like that there's some promise here having that card a seven's unfortunate but still really cool i don't wonder why i got us oh yeah up top you can see it looks a little like bent up there a little bit maybe that's probably what it was i wonder if it goes to the back it i can't really tell it's hard to tell through the slab sometimes quick break from the video i wanted to let you guys know that i'm updating the top 25 polls of 2023 at the moment and i want your help check out the form that will be linked down below in this video and go put in your favorite poll that i had on my channel there was some confusion when i posted on the community tab i meant my pulls, not necessarily any pull on YouTube, because this is my top 25 that we're doing for the year. So my best pulls of the year that you loved, make sure you put a link in the form and a timestamp so I can find it quickly. It'll really help me out. I want to know what you guys like the best this year so I can put it in the top 25. And once we have a lot to vote on, I'm gonna let you guys vote and decide what the order is gonna be. So it's gonna be fun. So go check out the form, put in your favorite pulls and be looking out for the voting process coming up soon. All right, PSA seven, let's see what else we can get we have a skyscraper to another seven that's a rough start for it oh yeah you can see a little bit on the surface there so probably clean other than that but yeah that that's pretty pretty big indention there that you can see it's fortunately not on the artwork or anything but another seven two ultimates though so ultimate rares maybe if you want like cheaper slabs with nice cards you could crack and put in your binder these are probably pretty good at least so far okay another japanese i'm hoping it's another ulti i don't see an ulti stamp Oh no, wait, Asian ink, whoa, a delinquent duo Asian English, that's pretty rare. I don't see a lot of Magic Ruler Asian English stuff. Wow, that's pretty sick actually. PSA 9 as well, so actually, you know, a somewhat decent grade there. That's actually pretty unique. We're seeing some pretty unique stuff so far. I like this return so far. Definitely different stuff than what I normally have. So it's cool to see variants on the channel. So great start for Marcus. Pulling the rug out of six, that's rough, but this is still probably a really expensive card because Edison is like, I mean, the rare from Stan is like $10. So just the ulti, like, it'd be great to crack this one out probably if you buy that and just play it in your deck because a six is obviously not a great grade, but definitely playable for sure. I mean, that's like light play, mod play. Okay, there's something on the back here. We got a seven, so a lot of ulti so far, which is good. Not a lot of great grades though, that's the problem. We got a seven on the birthright, so seven has been pretty consistent here. Okay, is this another Asian English? Because it looks like it's the same size logo there. I can't tell. Let's see. Oh, a Ring of Destruction Asian English Secret Rare. I'm guessing Pharaonic Guardian Asian English cards are pretty rare. I don't think I've ever actually had a Pharaonic Guardian Asian English card. I mean, the far so Asian English is widely looked at as like, ew, gross. Like if you're looking at LOB and you see Asian English, you're like, dang it, I wish it was like the North American print. Because you think it is at first, you flip it over, you're like, ah. Oh, but the farther you get into like Yu-Gi-Oh, so like you get closer, like newer and newer, it's actually better for Asian English because they get rarer and rarer, especially those like ultimate rare Asian English stuff are absolutely crazy. So I've never seen an Asian English Ring of Destruction. That's super cool. I can't even say English for some reason. There we go. 
got to pronounce what I'm saying. Okay, this one looks clean on the back. Wow, okay. Oh, TP4. This card is very hard. Yeah, TP4, this card is tough. Centering's really rough. But man, that's actually one of the cleaner ones I've seen from TP4. Uh, I opened a bunch of packs of this with my friend Gezi a long time ago. We pulled one of these and they all the cards were just completely jacked. So honestly, like if it weren't for the centering, that would actually had a chance maybe. All right, what else we got? So far, very nice variants. Like not any crappy cards here. These are all like pretty rare in their own regard. Karma Cut, there's an A from DRO4. So like it's not like the super, or actually I think it's normally a rare. So this is the only super version from Dark Revelation 4. Wow, that got an A. That one, maybe some print lines there, but honestly, this one's centered. I mean, that one looks like it might be a nine. That's pretty close. Cool cards here. Uh, oh, man. I haven't seen a three in a while. Okay, Yada Garasu got a three. Bent on the corner there. It's unlimited. I wonder why you went for a, th a graded uh, card that was a three. I'm not seeing a lot, though. Maybe it's hard to tell through the slab, but honestly, this three looks pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that three looks absolutely incredible, to be honest. So I don't know about that one. All right, we'll put this in like six and below pile. We're going to do that just so we have more room. Not going to lie, it's a pretty cool return so far. Uh, Marcus has been waiting about a month for me to get to this. Sorry, Marcus. It was a crazy November, but uh, this has been worth it. It's been worth the wait. OK, Rise of, is that Rise of Destiny? OK, that's a weird one. That one's like a one dollar card, but OK, that's the first one. I'm like, I'm not sure why he graded that one, but I mean, it's a cool card, but the ulti is obviously the big one. Okay, okay, this one I understand. I mean, it's not the ultimate rare, but it's a Elemental Hero Ultra Rare First Edition. It got a nine. That's actually, he hasn't had a lot of nines, so that's actually decent. Let's see what else he got. Ooh, that's a sweet secret rare. You bell the ultimate nightmare from Phantom Darkness. I wonder what's wrong with this one. Centering looks good. I can't, maybe, that's, that looks like it's on the slab. I don't see a lot, a lot wrong with that one. That one seems okay. All right, interesting. Don't really know because I can't see them raw and I haven't seen them before. It's the first time I'm seeing the cards. It looks decent on the back. Oh. Haman Lord of Striking Thunder. Okay. Okay. Speaking of big cards, I mean, this is unlimited, but still, wow. That's a big one. And that's pretty too. Is that a Euro? I don't really know. I feel like Euro didn't have a lot of unlimited or maybe we didn't have unlimited. I'm not really sure. There's not a, a lot of unlimited in general of this, this kind of stuff from GX. So, wow, that is a bit, that's probably the most expensive card yet, even in an eight. Haman, Lord of Striking Thunder. Okay, this has been a good return. And by good return, I mean really good cards, not necessarily good grades so far. I really don't know what, I mean, they might be good for what they are. I don't actually know. Oh, a perfectly ultimate great moth from DB2, ultra rare. That looks really glossy for some reason. It's like a Euro print or something. I haven't opened DB2 in a while. I don't remember them being like this. This seems more like a Euro card. Okay, got a seven, so not crazy, but pretty cool looking card. Okay, more. This looks newer. This is the newer logo. It's not. It's, no, wait, no, that's not the newer logo. That's, yeah, I remember this now from when I opened this. PSA 5, unfortunately, but the ultimate rare Chaos Emperor Dragon. I opened up the, uh, I think this is from a tin, right? I think it's from a tin. Ultimate Rare Promo. I know it's a promo somewhere and I'm pretty sure it's a 10. And wow, that looks incredible. Got an eight for some reason. Not really sure why. Honestly, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell why these got these. Uh, this one, oh, is this another? Pro oh, I wonder if this had that. Wait, it didn't. Okay, this one's gonna be really bad then with that giant thing. Looks like another promo. This beat the five. What, this got a six? Duelist Legacy Volume 2. Wow, that is, uh, that's... That's a six. That's one away from near mint. A seven's near mint or, you know, whatever they call it. I think they call it just near mint. Yeah, near mint seven. Yeah, that is, uh, ouch, that is rough. I don't think, I don't think that's a good one. That should have been like a three in my opinion. The three looked better than that, to be honest. The three from what we could tell. Okay, back looks good here. Vampire Genesis, cool card, not very expensive. I guess he's just grading it because it's classic. Uh, centering's a little off. This one looks extremely clean. I feel like he had a rough grader. I really don't know though. I'm just guessing because I haven't seen him, as I've said, but uh, wow. Okay, that one looks clean. An eight on this one too. Wow. Centering's pretty good on that. I wonder what these are getting docked for. These are not expensive cards either, so it's not because they're expensive. Interesting. Okay, we've got another. This was like the same as the Asian English one. Ooh, a try unlimited, unlimited Asian English. Huh? And by the way, if they're reverse foil, a lot of times like unlimited foreign copies will be reversed. Stuff like that happens. So it's probably just because it's foreign. Like I know 
first ed euro can they're like always reverse or something like that so yeah there's a lot of weird things that go on with that so i don't think that's really a big deal here i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's right i got an eight okay so try or an unlimited that's interesting asian in english unlimited is also pretty rare oh demock another six man they were rough on these ultis so they do have a little bit of scuffing you can see there in the in the ulti imprint but compared to the blue eyes that had a entire crease in like the middle of the back that looks clean that card looks amazing an ultimate or a demock honestly i kind of want these these uh ulti cards <laughs> maybe i'll crack them out who knows okay let's see have to get them from it we have a light and darkness dragon promo man some of these in the slab look extremely clean it might be the slab hiding some of the imperfections which they can do which is kind of the nice part sometimes you get it graded and you can't really see the the damage anymore but uh yeah that one looks clean it appears to be clean what about this one Okay, another one. Same card. We don't need to go over that again. Pretty cool. This looks like another English card. We have a, okay, Grand Mark, the Rock Monarch, Unlimited, Flaming Eternity, Ultimate Rare. Such a random variety. Just a, he, definitely an Ultimate Rare fan. Honestly, the back, okay, yeah, there's that. That's probably dinging it pretty big. Pretty deep cut right there. Centering is a little bit off. Yeah, that's probably just what it was. He got a lot of sevens here, which, you know, I am I grade a lot, so I send on only mint stuff. If you are someone who just watches and you just have your cards, a lot of people think like, I'm not saying Marcus did this at all. He probably just graded these because he wanted to, but a lot of people look at them and they're like, wow, this card's mint. And they send in and get a seven. They're surprised. It's like they haven't like actually graded a lot to know that. People just assume that every card is like mint should be a 10, but a lot of, a lot of cards aren't. So let's see. Mazira Deville. But some of these here look, they look pretty good. Mazira Deville. Wow, a lot of sevens. A lot of sevens. I must have missed something. I don't know. Can't tell on that one. Okay, we got an eight. Super Ancient Dino, Dino Beast. This is another weird one. I don't really understand why he sent this one in. It is from Light of Destruction, but it's also very clean. I don't know why he got an eight, but weird choice on that one. Most of most of these, though, are pretty awesome. Creator, pretty cool card. I, I get why he sent it in. The name's a little bit messed up. Got a six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Something big there. That is definitely going to give it a six. That's reasonable for sure. Got a little bit of a bend there. We got an ultimate rare from Phantom Darkness, or, or sorry, from Light Destruction. Very cool. I saw Phantom Dragon said Phantom Darkness. This one looks clean. I bet it was because of the imprint and centering it got the nine, but nine is one. It's only got three nines so far. So there should be some affordable slabs available. And some of these cards are super rare, though, so they might still be expensive. Let's see about the back there. Oh, my goodness. DB2. I feel like he opened like a Euro DB2 box. I don't even know if that exists, to be honest. That might be Ben, but these are so glossy and dark. Yeah, they look like, they just look like Euro cards. That's a four. We've almost gotten every grade so far. We got a three, four. We got a five yet? Yeah, we got the Chaos Ember Dragon. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is what we've got. We need a one, two, and a 10. We've gotten every grade. That'd be, that'd be kind of crazy if we got all those. Okay, back. Another four. Okay, Sangha, uh, you're from Euro Metal Raiders. So, okay, there's a Euro card. Glossy, just like those other ones. Another foreign card. Sui, no, Asian English. So, where did he get all this Asian English cards? All of these Asian English cards, I should say. I cannot speak right now. We got a, a, we got another seven. Seven is seven and eights. That's where he got most of his grades, which makes sense. Those are kind of like near mint-ish. And so if you have like a nice looking near mint card, you might think it's a 10, send it in, gets like a seven or eight. These days they gotta be pretty minty to get tens. Okay, which which makes sense. Uh, back, this one doesn't look great on the back. A six, that one looks less clean than the others. Interesting, it's not Euro, this one's in A. Okay, so that's a six, wait, wrong pile. Other, other grades are even with the sevens as well. It feels like we've gotten a lot of those. This one has a little scuff, is that on the, can't tell if it's on the thing or not. Red Eyes from SDJ Unlimited got a seven. Okay, another seven that is equal to the eights. Can we get a 10? We need a one and a one and a two as well. We have a, okay, Neo Parshat, the Sky Paladin. First step from Stan, Secret Rare. Centering there looks slightly pushed that way. Back, man, this card looks pretty clean. Okay, I guess centering and maybe a few scratches on the back or something. Got it to the eight. What's this one? We have the, oh, Frostosaurus from Stan. Very cool. Ultimate rare. Centering's definitely off on this one. Probably like the ulti stamp or something. More eights. Eights are honestly good for what we've seen in this return, so we can't complain there. Uh, number, another, another six. Legacy of Darkness. Dark Ruler. Hades. Can he get a 10? Any 10s in this PSA return? Wow, there's something going on. This is not a 10. We have a, oh, a Jinzo Duelist Legacy Volume 1. Ultra Parallel Rare. That's pretty cool. I bet these are really hard to grade. They have like the Hobby League thing on them where it's kind of like that stuff really falls apart quick if you're not 
you don't preserve it really well. So that's not surprising that I got a six, but that's a beautiful card. Jinzo, that's really cool. Some really cool stuff. Oh, a Magician's Force Dark Magician Girl. Seven's not horrible for this card. Near Mint, you know, Near Mint. Usually they're a little bit under what I would call Near Mint, but PSA grades these as Near Mint. Honestly, this one looks pretty good. I bet it's mostly centering and just being Dark Magician Girl makes it harder. It shouldn't, but it probably does. Okay, next card, uh, another Dark Magician Girl. We got a seven there. All right, we don't need to look too much on that one. We have a Vampire Lord First Edition, got a five. First Ed Vampire Lord. Very cool. Man, doesn't look that bad. Back does look pretty scratched up, actually. That's probably why. Okay. Gene Warp Warwolf. Another weird one. A super rare. I don't know why this one's graded. That's an eight. That's a very cheap card, but I don't know. I guess he just liked it, but now we're selling them, so maybe he didn't like it that much. I don't know. We have the Slate Warrior. Okay. Slate Warrior World Championship 2004. A seven. I don't know what that was because these cards are usually pretty clean. Unless it was just like a childhood one. These could be like childhood cards. Who knows? Let's see what the next one is. We have Slate Warrior got an eight that time. All right. Slate Warrior is a pretty beautiful and awesomely iconic card just from like Playground Yu Gi Oh! You know, if you flip it over, it gets to be 2400. It's already 19 to begin with, which is huge. Getting down toward the end, we have a Magician's Valkyria. That's an eight. So jump card centering is, if not completely terrible. Honestly, looks pretty clean. Man, a lot of these eights look good. A lot of these eights look good. An Ocean 6 uh, jump promo. An Ocean 6, not Ocean 6. Okay, a lot of eights today. Is there going to be a 10 in here? Wow, that's not a 10. One or two, come on. Oh, Big Shield Garden ulti. That's really beautiful. Unfortunately, it has a giant crease in it. I'm wondering why he sent the crease cards in. Because, like, you know, that I maybe just... Wanted to? I don't really, I mean, obviously, but I don't really know. Let's see what this one is. Wild Heart. Okay, Secret. Elemental Hero Collection 2. This is actually a pretty rare card. Wow, that's beautiful. This is what the promo should have looked like in the uh, the G GX Special Edition or whatever it was in where they have the silver name and no secret. This is what it would have looked like. That looks amazing. Okay, we have four cards left. What else is there? Proto Cyber Dragon Ultra. Honestly, this has been a really fun return. I'll, I... Like, I agree with, like, grading most of these cards. Like, not necessarily the value, but just for, like, being good cards, you know? Like, you don't necessarily know the grades at the beginning, but, you know, like, this card, I would grade a Proto Cyber Dragon Ultimate Rare. If I thought it was going to get a 7, maybe not, but maybe he didn't think that. Three left. Fiber Jar. What? Oh, Asian English Fiber Jar. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Some Asian English people are going to think this is pretty awesome. A Legacy of Darkness Asian English. I've never seen a pack of that, a box of that. That seems pretty rare. Okay, Fiber Jar, that's pretty cool. Two left. Morphing Jar from TP4, that's a big card. Okay, Morphing Jar TP4, we are talking big time here. Maybe some scuffs on the back. I don't know what that is, but that's pretty beautiful. And the final card, if you guys have enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to check these out on Ruxin34.com. They will be available for you guys to purchase. We can we get a 10 on the last card? Oh my goodness. A Japanese Raviel Lord of Phantasms Ultimate Rare, PSA 10. Oh my, wow. That, that's gotta be a big card. That's huge. By the way, that card looks amazing, wow. Japanese SOI, that, whoa, that looks good. And it got the 10, wow, that, that like makes up for the entire submission, that is huge. Japanese stuff is usually like less valuable than TCG, so it's not gonna be like a $12,000 card, but I, I bet this is adds some decent value. We're gonna have prices on the screen for, a lot of this stuff is gonna be really hard to price because it's really hard to find and probably doesn't sell often, but wow, that is amazing. That is a sweet looking 10. Um, woo, that was sweet. And it's gonna be for sale, so if you're interested in it, go check it out on ruxa34.com. Thank you guys for watching, and Marcus, thanks again for the awesome video. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxter, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanna, America Deutster, Leo Gwine 62, Brad KK Beats, Ananda Taisho, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F, Thomas McLean, Changalang, and Joey Castle. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.